Hey, welcome. We're in the middle of an Ajax demonstration and we're about ready to create this display details button. Right now, if I click my uh, project and I choose display details, nothing changes. However, that will all change in just a minute. So to accomplish the goals for this video, we are going to have to create a method that will respond to the display details. So let's go fix that. Now to control where a method goes after the click is done, we need to go to the first line of the form called Begin Form, and this is where we will change the direction of the form input. So there are two parameters that we need to add to the Begin Form idea. So the first parameter is the action that will be called at the controller. And so I'll invent a name. It's called OnSelectCustomer. The second parameter is the actual name of the controller. And so we have a customer controller, and I only need to put the word customer here. Now when I run this, this will probably break because we don't have an actual event for OnSelectCustomer. So I have the customer items listed again. Now let's select somebody like Elijah and then display details. And sure enough, the application broke. And it says here, I could not get to this link here, on select customer. So we haven't created it yet, so that's why it didn't work. Let's go fix that. So to respond to a form insert or form submit event, we need to come back into the controller. So the controller has an action that we can just copy and paste. So let's do that and rename it. So from the customer form, I told it I was expecting to see on select customer as the name of an action. And so we'll just rename it as that. The rest of the code is identical. As you can see, the uh, same data is sent back to the form. So this would actually give you the exact same result as the original action. What's going to be different? Well, we are going to expect to find out which item was selected and then change that in the return. So the key item here is on line 45. So when we do unselect customer, we are expecting to get some data back from the form. And the item that we're looking for is called customer number. Now, where did that come from? Well, the word customer number comes from the customer form or the view. And you can see that the radio button has the ID number of the guy that or the girl that's selected. And then it has the label that goes with it or the value name. So customer number is what I'm thinking about. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going back into the controller and replace this one here because I had forgotten to put in a capital C. So that's very important that you match those names exactly. So now I have a customer number and it comes in the form of a string. We need to change this. So now instead of selecting item two each time, I'm going to send it back the customer number. So I'll just put customer number inside the square brackets and everything will work fine, right? Doesn't look like it, there's a problem. What's it say there? It says I'm expecting an integer for an index of a, of a list item. Well, of course, we need an integer. And customer number is really a string. Well, it comes in the form of a string, but let's convert it into an integer. So in C-sharp, one of the methods that you can use to convert from a string to an integer is the int32.parse. So if you indeed send a number in the form of a string, this will work. If you send something besides a number, of course, this will crash the program. But this should work because of our well-formed view that we just created. So it looks like the application still runs. Now let's go ahead and select somebody like Tim and choose display results. So now the entire form is updated. You can see that the time down here at the bottom is different than it was just a second ago. Every time I click somebody and choose display results, the form refreshes and we get Howard in age 64 at the bottom. So that takes us to a non-Ajax example. We haven't gotten to the partial page updates yet, but we at least have our form working so that we can select somebody, and then we get a return value that comes back to the details of the customer. So in the next part, we're going to change this so that this date time stamp up at the beginning will always remain the same. In other words, the page will not refresh, but every time we update, we will see the bottom section will indeed refresh because we are only displaying the differences that need to be rendered, not the entire page. So that's the magic of Ajax. So let's come up with that just in a moment here. 